Be Useful by Arnold Schwarzenegger. All right, guys, it's time to be useful. Arnold Schwarzenegger, let's discuss this. Damn, he's getting old. He looks good, though. And check out that beard. Look at that volume, volume, you know? This man is very accomplished. He was in bodybuilding and then acting and then politics, and he was quite successful. Not to mention he's not even from America. Fast forward 55 years, five kids, and one marriage later, a lot of people know who he is, and they look up to him as well. I checked out his memoir, Total Recall, and it was very well put together. Lots of regrets, some touching moments, and, and some very inspirational, but is Be Useful just like a motivational follow-up or something? Why is it called Be Useful? Is it good? So many questions. Seven tools for life, like what does that even mean? Is it just seven things to abide by or is it actual physical tools? I mean, it's 2023 folks, like it could honestly be anything at this point. Sometimes it is on this channel. You know, other times we're left cocking our heads, but let's talk about it. Just so you guys know, there are affiliate links in the description and if you buy anything through those links, like maybe th this book, then I get commission, which helps me build this channel and keep making these videos. You can also find this book and many others on my Amazon storefront. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sam and I wanna make self-growth normal because people shouldn't have to look this information up. It should just be mainstream knowledge. If you agree, then please make sure to smash that like button. Tool number one is have a clear vision. Have a clear vision, crystal clear vision. By the time he was 15, he knew he wanted to move to America. He saw pictures and movies of beaches and bridges and cities and women and men, and it turned into a process of self-discovery and possibility to him. This is all when he was just a kid. Like he said to first get into the rhythm when you're doing this of like daily goals, small things like doing the laundry and taking a walk and writing, just writing down what you did to become familiar with the feeling of what it's like to accomplish something. And then start doing weekly goals goals and then monthly goals and then yearly goals and these things they they become bigger things that are you know something that takes you like a week to do because you already know what you can do in a day and all starts to, to 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 build up a little bit tool number two is never think small toward the beginning of chapters i began to grasp that you can tell where he is in his life he has done his work he has learned his lessons and obviously it is his choice as to whether he wants to do more of all that but uh this is just not the type of book that you could possibly expect at my age for example i'm 26 it's just it's more so the type of book that you could expect from someone who has really lived, you know, a life. A little bit of a side note here, am I the only one who spends like half of every year mentally processing the act of turning a year older? Or is that just me? The other day, I had someone asked me how old I am and I swear I almost said 27. I had to stop myself. But when I turned 26, someone asked me how it felt to be 26 and in my head I'm like, I've been 26 for since six months before I turned 26, so ask me six months ago when I was 25, and I suppose we'll see how that plays out. I love the way he thinks about things in this book. I truly do. This chapter reminded me of the notion that success tends to like perpetuate success, and that the most successful people, they'll just achieve something, and then they'll and just want to achieve more. A really good example that he gave of this was, uh, he mentioned the guy who first climbed Everest, and people asked him what it was like to view what the view was like at the top of the world. The guy said, you know, it was really beautiful because when I reached the top, I could see the top of another mountain in the Himalayan mountain range that I hadn't even climbed yet. And I was already thinking about the route I wanted to take to summit that peak next. It's really not what you would have expected someone to say in his position, right? Fun fact about Everest, I know way more of these than I should. For example, the actual pronunciation of it is Eve Rest. From the top of the mountain, you can actually see the peaks of Mount Lhotse, the fourth tallest mountain, Makalu, the fifth tallest mountain, and Cho Oyu, the eighth tallest mountain. You can see all three of those from the top of Everest, <laughs> the first tallest mountains. Isn't that, isn't that insane? The Himalayans, man, they're, they're, they're pretty, they're really wild. Everything Schwarzenegger did, he did big. And and this is something I really picked up on when I was checking out his, his memoir, which came out a really long time ago. Uh, but he worked out, he worked out for four to five hours twice a day when he was a bodybuilder. Isn't that like completely nuts? As an actor, he did major movies that, that were huge gambles. And he was a hell of a self-promoter. Again, check out his memoir. Like if you don't believe me, he spent a lot of time promoting those movies. As a politician, he ran the sixth largest economy on the planet. As a philanthropist, his goal is to help fix the earth. What a force of nature. What if bodybuilding was just a hobby to him? What if he became a cop just like his dad in Austria? He said it all sounds like a slow death. 
as opposed to doing everything you're capable of. No offense to people who do bodybuilding as a hobby and the Austrian police force. Tool number three is work your ass off. I always resonated with the ideas in this chapter. I started working literally right out of high school. And it didn't occur to me until maybe a year or two later that there are actually people who don't enjoy going to work every day and just going balls to the wall from start to finish. I worked maybe 70 hours a week at the time. And when I wasn't at work, I was working on music. I worked on music when I was at work when I was on standby. In the next three years after that, I ended up putting out six fully self-produced EPs. It was 30 songs from scratch. And with the amount of detail that went into each, it eventually took me 36 to 48 hours in total to put a single song together. I fully produced about 100 beats and most of them included choruses that I wrote and recorded as well. All of this fully, fully original music, by the way, is actually on my channel. I remixed at least 50 like pop songs that are, were on the top billboard. I didn't even like really pick them selectively. I really just picked from like the top 10 on the billboard Hot 100. I recorded and mixed hundreds hundreds and hundreds of features and fully original written songs over other producers' instrumentals that they would just send me without me like asking or anything. Most of them I didn't even like. Uh, my mindset was that nothing was impossible for me to come up with a song over. And the amount of content I created was honestly disgusting. Over the span of three years, I wasn't even responsible for releasing a lot of it though, because it wasn't mine. So of course 90% of it never even reached the light of day. Still a lot of it was ended up, you know, online. I worked all the time. Eventually I realized, I, I never saw my family. I, I never spent time with anyone really. Eventually I realized the music industry was just not as lucrative as I wanted it to be, even at the very, very top. So I quit it. Just because of that reason, just for that reason alone. I started reviewing nonfiction books, and today, as long as I'm awake and uh, I'm, I'm not around my fiance, you can bet I'm either working at work or working on a video. In the last four years, uh, I've reviewed over 300 books, and there were some several month sales training stretches in the process that slowed it all down. So I'm not bragging, or at least I don't mean to sound like I am. It's just that I always felt like work itself was just designed to be done and enjoyed, but not glorified. If that weren't true, I wouldn't do it and I wouldn't enjoy it. I would just glorify it, which I don't do. We Americans are so obsessed with work and it really annoys me. Stop talking about it. Just do it. All right, enough about me. I'm talking way too much about myself in this review. Tool number four is sell, sell, sell. I mean, just so you guys know, if you listen to tool number three in the book, you're probably going to hear his version of that. Schwarzenegger talks in, in tool number four about his experience selling, promoting, and answering questions and solving problems and dilemmas people had regarding what he did over the years, from the way that people looked at him as a bodybuilder to what bothered people about his acting career, like literally only, just his name. Such a stupid thing to be bothered by, let alone his accent. His accent really, it, it's extremely thick, um, but it's really not hard to understand. And also, like, like the roles he played, like the Terminator. Like people had a problem with him playing the role of the Terminator. Such a dumb thing to be bothered by. But like he had something very professional and, and concise to say about it. Like he, he knew how to handle when someone brought up a concern to him in an interview that tens or hundreds of thousands or maybe even millions of people would watch at some point. What he had to say about his experience with politics was pretty astounding in a good way, of course. He wanted to just not be another politician. I looked at a Quora article and a lot of people from California, they did say like in retrospect, you know, he did a good job given the cards he was dealt by the previous guy, but overall he was just kind of okay. I honestly didn't really compute like with what he was saying regarding all the things he did as governor, but he was damn good at handling press, which no politician really seems to be bad at nowadays. At least a politician who <laughs> managed to get into office. Tool number five is shift gears. By shifting gears, I think he meant shifting perspective. I don't really think he was like clear about what it was and what he meant. Something goes sideways and it's just ultimately your decision on how to respond. A good thing to, hear, to ask yourself when this happens is if I respond this way, is it helpful? You could respond the, the way your instincts tell you to with, you know, negativity. I mean, we, a lot of us really sort of default to that until we are able to train ourselves to default to something more positive. But saying, you know, this is never gonna work out, I'm totally screwed, and then you just give up. Or you can take it all one step at a time, make the most of every day ahead of you, and turn into a total legend. Whether you experience a big loss in your life, you have to start anew, or you go through any major change in lifestyle that's beyond your control that you feel like you're gonna have to get used to or get over. Schwarzenegger talks later in the chapter about risk and I found it interesting how he said his tolerance to risk being so high is primarily because when he was a kid in Austria he really felt like he had nothing to lose. And I like how 
when he finally moved him to America and the older he got, the more he realized that like something from his childhood, he just kind of took it and flipped it on its head and made it himself into something incredible. Tool number six is shut your mouth, open your mind. The main idea of this chapter is to open your mind, to soak up the world like a sponge and understand the world you live in. This world needs more sponges. It needs more smart, hopeful, driven, youthful people with vision. It needs people who can dream up the world of tomorrow, which only happens when people are first able to soak up the knowledge of the world from today. And tool number seven is break your mirrors. If you've ever seen any interviews with this guy, you may have heard him say something about at some point being self-made and how he refuses to be called self-made by people. He believes very, very strongly in inter interdependence and that any massive success is a never ending series of people, other people making you better and you making other people better. Then he basically went into how giving is living and how living is giving. He helped out these kids in the, um, in the Special Olympics with weightlifting and he saw the difference that it made in their self esteem and I looked it up. Um, his mother-in-law actually founded the Special Olympics, so I suppose it makes sense as to how he would have had a connection to contribute to that sort of cause. But a little bit of an early direction one who I recommend this book to here. Uh, I think this book would be great for someone who wants to make a little more sense out of what makes a successful person practically successful. At the most, I would say this book is barely about mindset. Some of these tools made a little bit more sense to me at least than others. Maybe not all of them are gonna make as much sense to one person as, as anybody else. For me, Shift Years, I, I don't really think he explained nearly as well as the others. I listened to it twice. It didn't really register for me, like sell, 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 or work your ass off. Um, the same can probably be said about Break Your Mirrors, but the book, for the most part, I would say it was written well. The concept was somehow unique, if not at least executed in a unique way, and it did all make sense in the end. He used a clean balance of his experience and other people's. Always a pleasure to run into that clean balance in one of these books, and it was a fun listen. I almost wanted wonder what's next on his agenda, but I'm sure we'll see when whatever that is, is coming out. Quotes. It's only ideas gained from walking that have any worth. In crisis situations, the solutions that seem obvious from the outside are always more complicated than they look. The way things had always been done, it wasn't getting anything done anymore. Ask them why they went to college and they'll tell you to get a degree. That's like saying the reason you go to work is to get to the weekend. Direction two. If you like this book, I recommend checking out Total Recall, also by Arnold Schwarzenegger, that's his memoir, and The 10X Rule by, Cran by Grant Cardone. Be useful, seven tools for life, by Arnold Schwarzenegger. There's a link in the description if you guys want to check it out and read the reviews, that and all the other books that I, mentioned, that I mentioned in this video if you want to check those out too. If there are any other books that you guys want me to check out and review, please let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know if you checked out this book and you liked it. But hey, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, because I don't get why people watch this far into my videos and they don't subscribe. But if you have subscribed and you want to turn it up just a notch and turn on that notification bell to get a notification whenever I drop new videos, that would mean the world to me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You can find me everywhere and I will see you then.